Enjoy your meeting. Just a reminder, today's meeting is being recorded. Hey everybody, good afternoon. Uh, this is David Blake and this is uh, Tuesday Tech Talk. Uh, today we're going to quickly review the last couple of days and we'll try to figure out what the market's going to do over the next couple of days. And I had uh, a couple of people coming in with questions that wanted me to look at the different sectors to see what might be uh, leading or lagging the market uh, going forward here. So I usually try to talk about 20 or 25 minutes. This is your first time. We're, uh, one of these, we're glad to have you. Afterwards, we're going to open up to uh, questions on individual stocks or the market, whatever you feel like talking about. So um, just to touch base on what happened last week, uh, the major averages were lower last week for the second time in three weeks. We saw a 150-point jump on Monday reverse and finish lower. That was um, mainly due to the uh, central banks in Europe getting together and deciding they, they would bail out the Italian banks if they had some bad loans, which everybody got excited about. We're still not seeing these big uh, jumps in the market due to uh, strong economic data, that kind of thing, so that still has me a little bit of worried. But anyway, the market posture was flipped from neutral to bearish last Friday. Uh, we're projected to stay bearish on the market probably through the end of May, so this year may be another one of those uh, sell in May and go away uh, periods. Uh, it's usually a seasonally uh, weak period for the market anyway. But it uh, looks like the bulls are getting a little bit nervous before earnings season. Um, last week also we had a little bit of the central banks were being questioned about how much more they can do and how uh, effective uh, negative rates actually are for the market. Uh, there's, they're bringing the question about that. Uh, also last week, uh, despite only being off of you know, about a point, one and a half percent or so, only the energy and healthcare sectors were higher last week. Uh, the big losers were utilities, financials, and consumer discretionary uh, stocks. Also, the momentum index fell from a plus one uh, two weeks ago to a neutral minus three. We'll see if that uh, deteriorates further this week. And also, we saw um, uh, on the NASDAQ, anyway, we had the internal breadth, uh, internal numbers uh, deteriorate a little bit. The uh, Dow Jones or NYSE still, still remains pretty strong. I think because you're seeing uh, more buying, people going to the market, they're still looking for dividends and, and keeping the big cap names. So um, another surprise from last week, we saw uh, uh, more weakness in the Dow Jones transports, which we'll look at a little bit later on. Uh, that that's market has been down 12 the last 15 days. We also saw last week, along with the NASDAQ, saw that index fall below the 200-day moving average, which uh, is a little bit troublesome. That that uh, index is, is what the one actually that uh, bottomed first in January and has led the broader market higher. So we want to keep an eye on that to see if that's given us any clues uh, that we may have run out of gas here. Um, also, if you're a bull, you want to watch to see how long the NASDAQ stays below the 200-day level. The longer it stays below that support level, uh, which is now resistance, um, the more trouble it's going to be for traders. And finally, um, we have, we've had a couple of days here, the, the, the market uncoupled from crude oil prices, although today we've got a big bounce in crude oil and the, and the market uh, rallied again about 150 points. So uh, we'll, we'll see what could be uh, the problem with that. Okay, first off, we're going to look at the, quick, the indexes real briefly. Um, first, we have the Dow Jones Industrials. Uh, we finally broke above a, a descending trend line going back to the, to the highs from last summer. Uh, we're struggling right at that level right in here, um, so we're stuck in a little bit of a trading range. Now, if you see a break below 17.4 on this on the Dow Jones, that, that might trigger a move down to about 17.150, which is around the 100 200-day moving average. That uh, is probably going to be pretty strong support uh, right in this area for a while. I think uh, as we get further into earnings, that's when we'll see the market probably roll over and come down here to test uh, the lower prices. But also you can see down here we have the MACD short term uh, is bearish. Uh, the uh, RSI 14 is, is neutral, but it's, it's, it's deteriorating pretty rapidly here. Uh, I think we finished yesterday around 48 or 49. We have, we're getting a sell here on the 30-day uh, uh, stochastic uh, oscillator, too. So if the market comes down here and breaks the 17.4, um, that's going to bring into play the 16,725 area, which would be uh, the 50 cent retracement uh, from this move up from that level. I'm not sure that's going to happen anytime soon, but maybe going out another week or two, we'll, we'll see how that, that plays out. Okay, next we have the S&P 500. 
Um, it's kind of a busy chart right in here, but uh, you can see we're kind of, uh, again, in a, a short-term trading range. It can't seem to push the new highs. We uh, we did get above the 200-day moving average, which was also the 61.8% Fibonacci uh, level of this whole move. Uh, didn't make it up to the descending tr trend line, but, um, uh, you know, we, again, if we get a pull back down here, I would, I would expect to see us test this 2010, 2015, uh, maybe 2018 area. Um, uh, we also broke the trend line going up over here, but MACD is bearish. And again, we have the neutral 14-day uh, RSI, but it is it's pointed down and looks a little bit weaker. The NASDAQ, again, we've got the little sideways action here, just can't get out of its, out of its way. Uh, similar to the other charts, we didn't even make it up to the descending trend line uh, in the NASDAQ, but we uh, were struggling here to hold on to this 200-day uh, moving average, which is also the 61.8% uh, uh, retracement from this move down here from, uh, from last fall. So we want to watch that. Uh, I think you might make a little test down here at 47.75, which is right around the 100-day moving average. If we break that, you can get the 50% retracement down here around 45.50, somewhere in this area here. So, uh, again, MACD is bearish, and we're neutral on the RSI. Uh, here's the Russell 2000. Again, never, never even made it up to the 200-day moving average on this uh, on this rally, and it also is below the descending trend line, which is also the exact same spot as where the 200-day moving average is. Uh, next support um, down here would be probably around this 1080 area. I would kind of kind of keep an eye on that. Um, MACD again is bearish. We're also neutral in the RSI. Plus, we're seeing this negative divergence on the RSI, which is a little bit uh, a sign that we may, uh, you know, it's getting a little bit weaker, not, not strengthening. Okay, we talked a little bit about the Dow Jones Transportation Index. You can see where it came up here, um, hit, hit this descending trend line and stalled out, bumped into it again, and now we're, uh, we broke below the 200-day moving average, and we're at the 61.8% uh, Fibonacci line. Now this one here, you definitely have had a rollover on the 30-day stochastic. You're also pretty negative on the MACD and uh, the RSI 14-day. Uh, this is something you want to see. It's, some people will look at this as, okay, when you get below 30, you're going to be over oversold. But Connie Brown, who is uh, an author and technician uh, for institutional firms, has done a lot of studies where, where when she sees the RSI, she's, she looks at it in a little bit different way. When, when it's between 40 and 70, she considers that you're still in a bull market in a stock or an index. However, however, when you break below like 30, um, she considers that that now not only is it oversold, but now you're uh, you're leaving the the, the bullish uh, trend and you're beginning to roll over. And you're going to start into a more of a bearish trending market. And you want to watch that. That this thing uh, stays below this 30, 35 area, that would be negative. And again, yeah, the MACD also bearish on that. So uh, another level to watch over here. If we, we could get down to around this 7,400 area, and that would be the 50% retracement on the uh, on the on the transports. And again, what's, what's troubling about this is this thing bottomed before the other indexes did and started up in January. Um, it has had about a uh, uh, I'm not sure the, what a percentage move we've had on that. It's, I'm sure it's above 20% anyway. So further weakness in the Dow Jones transports would be a little bit of a red flag. And uh, I would keep my eye on that chart just to see uh, if it can it can bounce off of this this level right here. Okay, I had a couple other questions about where to invest and what sectors might be uh, leading a lag in the market uh, since we've had this 14% runoff of the bottoms. So we're going to take a look at the uh, defensive sectors first. So you can see here is the one-year chart on the uh, Dow Jones uh, Utility Index. Well, no, no, I take that back. This is the Utilities ETF. Um, you can see the indicators are finally starting to roll over. You're having some negative divergence here on the RSI. MACD has gone bullish. You've had a pretty good little pullback in here. Um, a little bit of bounce in here. Uh, we're up, up slightly today again. But um, I would see, uh, you know, we're, we're still in a bear, on a bull market. And if you look back at the longer term trend, I want to go back to 2009 on this. So you can see we're in a, in a clear, clear uh, up upward trend, trending channel on that. These little things that you see over here and what we're in partially right now uh, are referred to uh, in technical jargon as throwovers. Uh, it's one thing that's extremely overbought, which we just recently did, uh, which, which we saw. So 
Uh, this thing needs to pull back. Uh, if you see the utilities pull back in here towards their 100-day and or 100-week uh, moving average somewhere around that area, uh, it, would, it would probably be a buy. You'd still be in that upward moving channel. Uh, the RSI looks strong, and the MACD on the longer-term chart still look good. So uh, over uh, it's, it's over, but you know on the on the longer term, I would wait to see the utility. I think they, they still have room to pull back a little bit more. Like another uh, uh, defensive sector, we're going to look at the healthcare. The healthcare sector um, came up here, failed at its 200-day moving average the last couple of weeks in the descending trend line, and we're also having a little struggle over here at the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. Um, it's, it's bouncing off of this 100-day, 100-week moving average. You want to watch that. Or no, this is, the, this is the short term. I'm sorry, the 100-day uh, moving average. Let's see if that's going to hold. Um, the thing, the thing looks all right. You're still seeing the RSI is still bullish, MACD is still bullish, but uh, it's, it's obviously pausing with the, with the long with the overall market. Now here's the uh, longer term, going back to 2009. You know, as you can see over here, back in around 2012, we started to have a parabolic move, and a lot of that was due to the uh, the big rise in the biotech stocks, which had a huge move at that point. But now up here on the longer term, you're seeing some uh, lower lower highs. And some lower lows. You want to throw out this this line right here. That was when they had that that flash crash. But uh, you came down. You you cut this uh, up uptrending line here on the last pullback. But we're struggling here to get through this this thing, and we're still in a series of, of lower highs. So you want to watch that. I think that uh, upside could be limited on the on the healthcare the longer term, as long as uh, you know as long as the government's still involved and in, in looking at pricing and and uh, and healthcare uh, pricing. That's that could put a little bit of a top on that, but longer term, if we if the market would pull back down to this area in here, um, you know, making a, a lower low would, would be a little bit troublesome. So uh, keep an eye on that. You want to see this thing break above that before you start to uh, think about adding to, adding new positions. Okay, another uh, defensive uh, sector is the consumer staples. Uh, here we're clearly in a uh, you know on a recent uptrend. This thing is. Uh, See, we, we've actually moved up about 18% uh, off of these lows. Uh, you hit the top of this trend channel. You're kind of going sideways again. Um, it broke resistance up here, going back to uh, uh, let's see, back in August of uh, 2015. It had a one, two. Had tried to break this thing four times, and we just finally did it now. Uh, it's a strong-looking chart. What I don't like about it is a little bit of uh, negative uh, divergence right here. We're also getting a sell on the MACD, but uh, the only reason I don't like this is, is that the consumer staples generally they, they trade at about 12 to 13 PE, and right now we're up trading up around 20 times earnings, which I think is a little bit pricey. Uh, I wouldn't be chasing those in here at this level. Uh, if you go back and look at the longer term, I think we're still in a, at a nice clear uptrend. But again, you can see that we're at the top of this uh, this channel. Uh, if you're looking to buy some of these, you might might see this thing pull back to around the 50-week uh, moving average would, would uh, represent a good buy. But you know, RSI, RSI is strengthening. Uh, you're seeing a lot of money go in here, mainly for the dividends. And uh, again, it's a defensive st uh, sector that can still offer you some growth. But I'd be a little bit uh, hesitant about price, uh, chasing these things uh, at, the, at this stage. Okay, now let's look at the uh, energy and, and materials sector. Um, we've had some pretty big moves in these things, to say the least. Uh, several things that look good on here. You, you, you've actually taken on the materials sector. You've broken above the 200-day moving average. Um, and also, uh, let's see here, you've broken through that. You also have a nice uptrending uh, uh, line up here coming off the bottom that you made back here in January. It kind of turned around the same time as the, the transports. And so far, it's holding this 200-day 200, 200 moving average, which is a positive. And again, you're starting to work your way back up this uh, uh, ascending trend line, which is a positive. You have a little bit of um, uh, you know weakness here in the RSI. It's back to this just below neutral. You have a sell in the MACD line, so you may struggle here a little bit sideways for a while. But uh, in general, that that sector looks pretty good. The only thing that has me concerned is in about uh, two months, two and a half months or so, you're up about 24% off of these lows. That's uh, uh, that's a pretty he healthy move, and uh, the, the fact that it's going to consolidate some of the gains in here would be good. But if you can see a pull back down in here, uh, if the market uh, gets a little bit weaker, I think the materials would be uh, something to buy. 
and the longer term, not quite as good. You had this uh, long-term trend line, which was broken along with energy back here uh, last summer, uh, and you're making uh, the lower lows. And at this point, you're still at a lower high, but what I do like is you can, you're coming up here either to a double top, which could see this thing break. If the market takes off again and you break, off, break above this uh, 46 level on the materials, uh, I think that's going to be bullish for the overall market. Uh, you're getting a little bit overbought on the uh, stochastics and uh, almost there on the RSI, but um, keep an eye on this chart. And if you can see this thing on a pullback, then break above this, this level here, uh, I think it would be good for the broader market also. Okay, next we have the energy sector. And this is another sector that's rallied hard. This is up almost 30% from its lows in, uh, in January. Uh, it's running the resistance up here at the descending trend line. Also, uh, hasn't quite made it up to the 200-day uh, uh, moving average yet. But a solid break above um, uh, above the, this, this, this descending trend line up to the, this would be would be good for the broader market. Now you can see that uh, a little bit of negative divergence again here in the, in the uh, RSI. But the uh, MACD looks like it's kind of bottomed and starting to head up again. Which uh, today I, I think today's move, uh, you're probably since it's one of the leaders of the market, you're probably going up here and testing this 200-day moving average, possibly even today. So you want to see the uh, RSI picking up some strength in here too, and that's that's good for the broader market. Okay, longer term, not quite as bullish as you can see here, going back to 2009, uh, we broke that long-term trend line uh, back in 2014. This is when you could. This is a textbook uh, uh, chart in here. We came back up to that trend line, failed, bounced off, came up again and failed, and then you rolled over. If you're ever looking for something that's short, you see this. This happening again where you break the line and it fails to come back up. That's a, a, a nice position to short. You also see the negative divergence in here uh, with, with the uh, RSI and the stochastic. Couldn't quite get above 50 either. So um, uh, longer term, this thing's still making lower lows and lower highs. You want to see this thing break above probably that $70 level on the long term. So another thing I want to watch down here for you is, is the possible – if this thing comes up here and then pulls back, and then we start heading again, you get, you can have a pretty nice looking head and shoulders, reverse head and shoulders in the energy sector. Um, if if it would come down and then come up here and break out to 70. Now what's also kind of interesting about that, even with a target, it's only going to take you back up to about 90, which is again the uh, 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 the long term trend line. So I'm not sure. Usually when you, when you see something like this, something fundamentally has, has happened to that to that sector. Maybe we're seeing that. Uh, yeah, maybe we're seeing that uh, you know, we will be as tied to fossil fuel going going forward. We'll have to take a look at that uh, maybe at some other point. Okay, here's the industrials. As you can see, over the last year, they've been all over the board. Um, uh, this thing, which was positive about this, is weakness in the U.S. dollar, which came in here originally when we were going to start to roll over, you know, strength, high, you know, strengthen the rates, or have an uptick in the interest rates. This thing rolled over because that was going to be bad for international industrials. But once they, they backed off, we've had quite a rally in this thing here. In fact, this thing is up almost 25%. Uh, uh, you know, you have a golden cross here on the 50-day, uh, 200-day moving average, which is also good. It broke above the descending trend line, came down, tested it, which you want to see. And it's bounced above it higher. We're strong again today. So uh, this is a good-looking chart. Um, but it, what, what's troublesome is the RSI, the momentum, has really kind of cracked you're down here around 32 and MACD is short term. So you may have a little bit of a struggle to sideways here with the overall market. But once we can come down here and find some support in the broader market, I think the industries, industrial uh, sector will be strong. But you also have to look at keep, keep an eye on UUP, which is the U.S. dollar. If, that's, if that stays weak to sideways, it will be good. If that would begin to strengthen again, that's going to uh, be bad for the energy uh, materials and the industrials. So keep UUP on your uh, chart list to keep – Keep an eye on. Okay, going uh, going out for the long term. Again, you have a nice uh, upward uh, trend line. You, you broke the uh, trend line back here, but uh, immediately it, it, it reversed and, and went back above it. I mean, the longer these things stay above these trend lines, the worse it is. So this was a quick break. Found itself. It actually came out and made a new high, which is which is a, a positive. So uh, you want to watch that longer term. I, I would be buying the industrials, but again, you got to keep your eye on the uh, U.S. dollar. Uh, on a market pullback. Okay, look at some of the uh, before, before we go to the growth groups. 
This is the uh, financial sector, which doesn't look near as good as any of the other, other things right now. Uh, we, we came down here, bottom, we're making lower lows, lower highs. We're struggling up here at the 100-day uh, moving average. It was unable to break through that. Now we've fallen, we've, uh, actually we're, we've fallen below the 50% retracement of this move from uh, back in December down to the March low. Uh, this thing, you know, the, the, the RSI again looks negative. MACD is negative. This thing has a ways to go. Now on the good side you have Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, everybody, Bank of America uh, reporting earnings this week. Maybe they can uh, surprise everybody and get a little bit of a boost. But if they don't surprise pretty big to the upside, this could be the Achilles heel for the uh, broader market because it's going to be tough to break the new highs if this thing continues to roll over. Uh, longer term, again, you, you, you just broke down that longer term trend line. You came back above it, and now you're down here testing that. If this thing falls below, the XLF falls below 22 and down here and, and, and can't hold this 200-day moving average again, uh, or 200-week moving average, that, that's a negative for the broader market. So, uh, again, we didn't even make it up to the uh, – uh, some of these support levels or resistance levels and the descending trend line here. We didn't even get a chance to test that. So you keep an eye on the financials. If they, if they can't get a bid here with their earnings coming up, uh, that could, uh, again, spell trouble for the broader market. Okay, the tech sector we'll look at next. Um, okay, with the techs, this is, a, this is a little bit strange. We've been in kind of a sideways motion. Uh, if, you, if you put in, if you just followed the uh, NASDAQ 100 looks a little bit different, but some of the uh, semiconductors and other uh, uh, small <coughs> have weighed on this thing a little bit. Um, but right now, as you can see with this sideways trend, we're actually coming up to a triple top, uh, we'll, and it's bounced off of that. We'll see what, what happens. Uh, the market rolls over. As you can see, some of the indicators are already rolled over. We might see, see this thing come back down to uh, the middle of its uh, trading range, and that's where all the uh, the main moving averages are. So. Watch for that to come down in here. At that point, if it holds there, I'd probably be a buyer with that technology. Uh, so we pull back. Longer term, great looking chart. You came down here, broke the trend line briefly, and then we rallied to the top of this uh, upward channel, um, which is where a normal spot where we should break off. It was definitely overbought over here at the end of 2014, but we've moved back into that channel. And uh, you know the indicators look, look strong in the longer term. Uh, you might get a little bit of a pullback, like we said, to this, this mid-range of the channel. Uh, I would probably be a buyer at that level. Okay, consumer discretionary will be the last sector we're going to look at real quickly. Um, and this, uh, again, you had a big sell-off. Uh, part of this was due to the broader market, but also the, you had some weak uh, sales over the, over the holidays. So you've come up here now. We've drawn in a new uh, descending trend line. You're still making uh, lower lows and lower highs at this stage. And you've kind of had a rollover in the indicators. We'll see if this, especially RSI 14, stays above, uh, you know, above 40 or so. That would be uh, bullish for that. Going out longer term, I still like the sector. You got a little bit ahead of itself over here, but a clear upward channel. Um, we're not even to the top of that channel yet again. So you, you still have some upside in, in these. I would, um, you know, any, any type of a pullback, I would, I would want to buy some of these stocks. Your Home Depots, your Lowe's. Um, you know, you know all to some of these stocks still look good. Um, to, uh, trying to wrap this thing up as fast as I can. But anyway, a pullback on that would be good. Here's the uh, Philadelphia Semiconductor uh, uh, Average Index. I want to see this. You're kind of caught in a sideways trading range over here. You have a triple bottom uh, on this. If you would pull back here, and uh, you, you might be able to pick up some of the uh, semiconductor stocks at this range. You want to see if this is going to be able to break above this resistance level at this stage here. I would like to you know, see a little bit. That's something to watch. If we can break above that, that would also be very uh, bullish for the, for the broader market. Uh, and the last chart I want to look at before we open up to questions is this. This is gold. You know, I've been bullish on gold last, uh, for a while. And this is another one chart that you want to keep, keep looking at. You see a lot of technicians in here drawing this, uh, this trend line down here. You don't see so much the trend line going down here, which means, uh, you know, quite frankly, we're, we're probably could still be in a uh, downward trending channel. There's always a possibility of that, as we talked a little bit of earlier about the throwovers, where you've, you've broken this line, it came, it came down here and we actually tested it and we found stuff and we're higher today, which is good. But if you see the gold start to break below this 115, the GLD or 1150 
on, on gold, that's going to spell trouble. But that would mean that gold has gone back into uh, this downward channel. Uh, and on the good side of that, it means that you've, you're, the, the broader market, stock market, is probably break, is going to break out the new highs. So uh, we're going sideways in, in a fairly good range over here. Keep an eye on that. It either breaks the new highs, which means you know, we will consolidate a little bit, maybe move low on the broader market. But if it comes back down here and breaks this, um, that could trigger that uh, you know be a flag that that we are on the broader market going to break out to new highs. So um, keep an eye on that that chart there. And that's all I have for today as far as just looking at what, what sectors we look at. I, I'm still a little bit uh, cautious on the uh, market. I, I don't see a lot of uh, pullback here over the next week or two. But I think once we move into May, um, you know, we, we could start to see a little bit more uh, weakness in there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of uh, sectors and indexes that are pushing up at that upper limit, which um, you, know, you want to watch that. There's, a, there's always a possibility that something comes in and uh, you know knocks this thing up to uh, to another run higher. It's had quite a move already, but I'd like to see some of this uh, these, this surges or jumps higher on earnings or or strong economic growth, and not just an, another central bank uh, swimming in here and, and putting something uh, you know throwing a floater. To, to the market. And you'd like to see it going up on strength and not just uh, uh, central bank inter inter intervention. Okay, so I'm going to open it up to uh, questions at this point. Um, again, this, this weekend on Friday, you want to watch the uh, momentum indicator on the, with the CTI. It's going to go to a minus 8, and we want to see if the uh, uh, momentum index uh, begin, still deteriorates even further. Okay, open it up for questions here. I don't see any questions coming in yet. Um, leave it open for a minute. Yep, we've got somebody typing now. Hold on just a second here. I'll try to uh, share this so we can see the charts. See if you can see the chart. Uh, okay, I bought CTI shorts last week, so I hold my positions. Yeah, you, you're only off of like, uh, you know, the market was down yesterday. It's up a little bit today. Um, you know, this thing's swinging back and forth. I don't see anything that's, uh, uh, you know, this doesn't look like everything's going on. You, you know, you, you, you have a limit on those because they're triple leverage. But like I say, I, I, I don't see the, uh, the market breaking out to new highs quite yet. I think you're going to go sideways for a little bit and then, then roll over. Okay, your opinion on AA? I got caught on the value trap. Um, okay, uh, can somebody let me know if you can see the charts or not? And so I'm pulling this up. Ho hopefully you can. I'm gonna. Okay, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go. Yes, you can see them. Okay, great. Okay, I'll go back to that. Okay, you saw uh, this thing trading sideways here, going into the earnings, but at the same time, it's going side, sideways. You're, it's, it's losing momentum. Um, today, we're you know, last night it was off for a little bit. Um, AA, it's down uh, four percent today, so we're down thirty-one. You broke below this 200-day moving average today, which is uh, and not, not too. I, I saw the earnings report. Revenues were down. There. They, they massaged the earnings to come out to, to beat. But um, th this isn't a, a, a real thing. I, I would probably wait to see this thing break above above $10 before I would even consider looking at this thing again. I don't know what the downside is on this. Um, let's see. You know, you're, you're, you're probably going to pull back down here to this, uh, one, at least the 50-day, um, down here around nine, nine dollars, nine, you know, eight, eight seventy-five, and, and probably try to regroup. Um, a, a lot of these, uh, you, you, you might hear a lot of stuff here on TV about these, these things are, are value stocks, but if the market's going going lower, uh, they're not really value stocks until that happens. Can you separate biotechs from the overall healthcare ETF? Uh, you can if you look at. Uh, 
Take a look at IBB. This is the uh, ETF uh, iShares NASDAQ um, ETF. And, okay, not, not a great looking chart. You can draw in the de descending trend line over here like this. Uh, you're, you're way below the uh, 200 day moving average. You've had a nice bounce in here, but it kind of ran into resistance up here at the 100 day moving average, and we've kind of gone south. Today it's uh, today you're up a little bit here. You're up 64 uh, cents uh, today, 80, 80 cents. My, my problem with the biotechs, uh, until you get some of this, uh, it's Congress. So it gets away from Congress trying to you know regulate pricing and stuff. It's going to have a little bit of a problem. At this stage, you're still in a lower lows, lower highs uh, mode on that. So. You know, you, you get some stuff maybe down here around the 50-day uh, uh, moving average in the biotechs. You can nibble away, or if you see the market working lower, uh, you can check down here to see if you get a double or triple bottom uh, on the on this ETF. But uh, they're just they're just not at a, at a point of strength. I'm sure, they're oversold, very oversold by a lot of different uh, things that you look at. And they've had a nice bounce in here, but I think this may have stalled out at this stage, and you may want to you know just be, I'd be cautious on these. Unless you see something that you're, you know, maybe adding to positions, maybe you bought over in here. Okay, is uh, Facebook is another is another choice? Not a good pattern, though. Facebook a buy with earnings projected. Um, yeah, Facebook's had a bad week or two. Um, <clears throat> get the chart up. We go. Okay. I you know, almost broke out to a new high here just about two weeks ago. Um, you know, and you had a little bit of uh, you've, you've had a pullback in here. I like the stock, uh, you know, long term. I think you, you see some, uh, you know, it's got it's got some good potential. You look up here. You, you if you got a market sell off and. You ever got a chance to buy this thing down here around 99? I'd be all over it. Um, but uh, I think some people, with, with, when you have high expectations and you're trading a high multiple, um, Facebook has had problems in the past. So I think probably the earnings over here, it kind of usually, usually does go down after earnings, and then you know it, uh, it has a kind of a history of that. So I don't think I certainly wouldn't be buying it ahead of the earnings. I would I would wait, but you know sometimes it'll bounce up, you know, gap up, and then. Reverse ahead of earnings. It's, it's kind of hard to tell with that. It's, it's, it's expensive no matter what, but um, you know you're still in an upward channel. You could you could go like this and say, okay, I reached the top of that channel. Here's the bottom of the channel. If I can get it down in this area again, uh, I'd be a buyer. Anywhere, any, anywhere probably from 105 to 100 would probably be a pretty good pickup on on Facebook. But again, you don't you don't know what they're, they're going to do with their earnings. And then of course they also take into consideration. How fast the, the users grow. I'm getting that Twitter trap. That's just a note. Let me see if I get the thanks. Okay, that's going to be about it. I don't see more questions coming in. I've gone over the uh, allotted time again. Um, I appreciate you joining me for a little bit. I hope this helps. I'm, I'm still a little bit cautious on this market, uh, even if we get a little bit, bit of a uh, a bounce. I, I could still see this thing kind of rolling over uh, towards the end of the month and into May. Uh, I'd like to. You know, there's, they, they're still cutting GDP. Several, um, you know, Fed uh, uh, presidents cut it from one and a half uh, percent for the first quarter down to 0.1. So, um, you know, if that thing starts to uh, slip negative, um, you can see the market crack again. Also, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, upside movement in China either or, or Europe. So. There are some problems that uh, we have out there, and um, uh, okay. And so, so join us next week. And we'll, if you have any questions, again, email them ahead of time to the doc at marketedge.com, and we'll try to go over them uh, then. All right, thanks for the week.